Welcome back, everyone, to Celine. This will be another shorter episode because I'm getting ready to go somewhere. But this kitty needs to be let in before she gets cold in the rain. It was cold outside, much colder than one thinks. He didn't feel angry anymore. All right, come in. He stepped aside, freeing the doorway. The cat didn't move. So you don't want to, huh? He was about to say fine then and close the door, go back to the second floor and lie in a suffocating half-sleep until morning. But he finally realized what was wrong. The bat. He threw it away, aiming for the sofa, but missed. The bat clattered on the floorboards. The cat followed it into the darkness with her round yellow eyes. The sound didn't frighten her. He sighed. I won't hurt you. Come in if you want. The cat raised her eyes at him. For the first time, he actually saw and couldn't help admiring how big and yellow they were. The cat's pupils were also large and incredibly round, like two full moons in an eclipse. Just as he was about to close the door for the second time, the cat murmured something and fluttered into the house, butting him with her wet head as she passed by. He smiled. Strictly speaking, at this moment, his line had ended. If the landlady found out, and he was sure she would, he would have to look for a new place to live. There are plenty of lonely, bored seniors in the neighborhood, he thought. And they only have two hobbies, absorb ab observing and reporting. The subject and the recipient aren't that important. Well, it's fine. Maybe he'd leave the suburbs. Maybe he'd move to an apartment, since he was getting privacy didn't work anyway. The rain was getting stronger still. He closed the door. The cat explored the house with its cautious curiosity, stopping in different objects as if trying to understand their purpose. Watching that was amusing, so amusing he didn't forget about the stain. When he remembered, it was already spread out, a dark spot of water in the place where the cat clung to him. He pulled the wet cloth away from his body and, st and, stared, blank and stared at it blankly for a moment, then almost groaned out loud. The cat was soaked, and so she probably got a lot of dirt in the house. He decided not to turn on the light. He had enough disappointment for the night. Instead, he went to get a towel. All right, come here. The cat turned her head to the voice in frozen place. She was examining the TV, a lifeless black mirror plasma panel in a liqueur, liqueur, liqueur frame that he hadn't even touched since moving in. In the reflection, the cat herself looked black. She gave him a long appraising look and then, with a sudden eagerness, trotted towards him, deftly avoiding the obstacles. He was surprised. Maybe the cat decided he was more interesting than the TV, or maybe she acted out of respect for her host's will. Anyway, he did feel grateful. Finally, someone he can actually negotiate with. Suddenly, he thought how nice it would be to crawl under a blanket with a warm ball of fur. It would surely have helped him fall asleep. As a child, he had a cat, gray, huge, brash, immensely ugly, and equally beloved. He often fell asleep hugging him, the cat's name was Timo, and he faded into a June night many years ago. The cat bumped her wet head against him once more. He thought the cats he thought cats usually shake them shake off the water themselves, usually, but perhaps not always. Hey, easy there, you're all wet. The cat looked up at him with her moon-shaped eyes and murmured something again. Try me. Do something about it then. He smiled and got to work. He had to squeeze the fur thoroughly so the towels soon turned into a wet rag. Should he? Alright, so again, we're trying the other choices. Never mind, this can wait. The cat's fur wasn't very long, but it was fluffy enough to hide her sunken sides. He once again surprised at how skinny she was. He was even more surprised when he noticed a collar with a small locket. So do you have a home? 
In this case, you also have some shitty owners, I must say. The cat curled up on a wet towel in his lap, slowly dozing off. He could feel the familiar lulling vibe emerging from inside her. Suddenly he put the towel with the cat on it any away. I should get you some food. Let me see what I have. He got up, but just a tad difficulty. Nothing he couldn't handle. Still, his body felt unusually heavy and unwieldy. He had to give the cat something to eat. He will lie down afterwards and then, hell, maybe he'll even fall asleep. Maybe he should have gotten a cat from much, much earlier. A ball of fluff with, with a pair of moon eyes and a velvety voice that you can always negotiate with. Meow. And that's about it. It's kind of funny. He could have avoided all that suffering if only he had a cat. The kitchen blurred before his eyes. He got to the refrigerator and opened it, squinting from the light and leaning on the door way harder than he was supposed to. If the landlady was around at the time, she would have told him exactly so. Don't lean on the door. After all, this is her house and her refrigerator, and everything should be neat and tidy in case she has to move new tenants in. That is not how renting works. Perhaps the landlady would even warn him about the milk. The milk itself is completely harmless, unless, of course, you're allergic to lactose. But there is special kinds of lactose-free milk, right? What matters is the bottle. Bottles, much like cats, can be very great, can vary greatly, but this particular one was made of glass. If only the landlady was here, she would probably have told him not to touch the bottle, because he's falling on the floor, and the bottle might break. And then the milk will spill, and he will have nothing to feed the nice cat he found. Or rather, it was her who found him, and very timely, because he was lying on the floor. He had been lying there for some time, and would have been lying still if he didn't feel light touches something hot and rough on his cheek. It was almost like a dream, although, of course, comparing sleep with fainting isn't quite correct, no matter how you look at it. The floor beneath him was surprisingly hard, wet, and cold. He felt all those three qualities clearly and was afraid to imagine what would happen if he tried to move. But he had to move, one way or another. At least to see what's up, because something hot and rough was still sliding up his cheek, gradually creeping up to his ear. He felt a warm breath, and then a cautious bite. Ouch! He jumped on the spot. The shadow rushed to the side and then calmly began to lap from the milk puddle. Good kitty. Stop biting. The cat. What are you doing? The cat looked at him briefly, then licked her lips. No need to be this dramatic. You were lying around idly, and you're not even a cat, see? Besides, you're soaked in milk. Well, you're right. I let you down and had to get my punishment. I let myself down, too, literally. Good lord, now there's cleaning to do until... Next advent, like his mother would say, I'll go get a rag. Stay here and don't ruin what's left of the kitchen while I'm gone. The cat watched him go with a skeptical look. Aren't you the one who's been causing all the trouble so far? I think we agreed last time. Well, you're right about this. But you know what? All this happened because I decided to help you out. I'd appreciate a bit of cooperation. The cat was looking at him from below, her back arched. It seemed she was pondering on something. 
Then she straightened her back and stretched with delight. For a moment, her, breast outline, her breasts outlined clearly under the stretched fabric of her dress, and then a firm pink nipple popped up on the brim, or maybe he thought it did. Yes, right. He must be imagining things. What? His mouth instantly dried up, and his head grew empty and light. All right, all right. No need to worry over spilled milk. I'll fix it all now. Fix what? The question almost slipped from his mouth, but he didn't say it out loud. Because soon enough, he got a new, much more pressing question. What are you doing? The cat maneuvered around the puddles of milk, and in a few light, precise moves, appeared right next to him. She got really close, looking at him from above, propped on her hand and lightly tilting her head to the side. He saw her eyes glistening in the moonlight. Then her hand lay on his stomach and then slid upwards, exposing his skin. He repeated his question awkwardly because his tongue was already barely obeying the will of its owner. She lightly slid her finger with a neat pink nail over his lips. Shush. Don't you want me to make everything right? She leaned over him, moved closer, very close, so that he could feel the sweet smell of her skin. Her hand wandered in higher and higher until his clothes exploring caressing. Her tongue sing the skin around his chin, slipped higher, barely touching the corner of his mouth, and then even higher up to the cheekbone. There, she put her lips to his skin and then released with, with a light bite. <clears throat> I love milk so, so much. Would you mind if I thoroughly lick you all over? He wouldn't be able to squeeze a word out of himself, even if he wanted to. But he didn't want to say anything, he only wanted her to continue. He tried to hold her close, but she deftly escaped his grasp and slipped down. Her tongue, a hot, flexible tongue, slid over his stomach. Lower and lower, her tiny palms were stroking his thighs, gradually approaching the bulge and the carotid. When he came back to his senses, the cat wasn't there anymore. But the memories of her were bright and too vivid to simply brush them off. He was afraid of them. He was afraid of what he did, of what he may have done. After all, his clothes were still on, and fine, if that can be said about Clark clothes drenched in milk. He convinced himself that none of that had happened. Maybe he would have convinced himself that the cat didn't exist, but he didn't want to believe it. After all, he wouldn't just go get milk out of the blue. When he returned with the bucket, the cat was gone. The Theater of presents How to Bake In the kitchen, something exciting is happening. Take <laughs> Did you take the pills? Scratch out the entrails? The Egyptians widely used honey for embalming and preserving food later. Their recipes were adopted by the Greeks. Also, add a teaspoon of half a jam, and a little cinnamon. Before baking, put a teaspoon of butter on the top of... Ah! Microwave for five to seven minutes at full power. Don't listen to the screams. Hold up again. The next time he saw her was a few days or maybe in a week. He had a bad sense of time, especially when he was immersed in his work. We're going to stop there. By the way, guys, there is an adult scene that we just did. If you want to see it, please think about supporting me. Patreon subscribes to her OnlyFans. And if you want early access, please think about joining uh, YouTube, YouTube member, whatever they call it. Become part of the Waifu Mafia. If you're on Patreon, no wait, if you're on YouTube, you're part of the Waifu Army. If you're on Patreon, you're part of the Waifu Mafia. This doesn't get confusing at all, guys, does it? Because you guys did this. Alright, guys, thank you so much for your support. Don't forget, you can play this for free and get the 18-plus patch on Steam. 
Bye, guys. Have a fantastic day.